Yasmin ha dia akan terkeluar ni. So dia masuk balik. Alright. So I'm going to start the lecture. Okay. So negative feedback mechanism so for this part, uh, it, uh, we are going to look at uh, blood glucose uh, regulation, thermal regulation and also osmo regulation of, uh, of human. Okay, so basically um, your body has to maintain the right amount of uh, glucose in your, in your blood. Okay, so for example, if you take excess uh, glu uh, glucose, um, like after you have uh, eaten uh, a plate of rice or a slice of cake. Okay, so those excess glucose has to be uh, has to be managed. Okay, uh, so you, uh, your body has to make sure that uh, you have the right amount of glucose in your blood. Okay, so there there is a specific range of glucose that has to be in your blood, uh, and then for thermal regulation, uh, your body has to be maintained at a specific temperature in order for uh, all the enzymatic activities in your body. Uh, can occur uh, accordingly. Okay, uh, so uh, the normal body temperature is 37 degrees and as you know the optimal uh, temperature for enzymatic activities, for most enzymatic activities, especially in your body, it has to occur at uh, 37 degrees Celsius. So if above or below that uh, that temperature, so uh, the enzymes so get that involved in, uh, in all the metabolic activities or uh, uh, other reactions within your in, within your body will be disturbed. Okay, and then for the last one is osmo regulation of human. So this one we are going to look at uh, the formation of urine, how urine is formed, and uh, how your body maintains the right um, uh, fluid concentration. Okay, within your body, right? So for the first one, uh, for, the, for the first part, we are going to look at uh, blood glucose regulation. So as you know, glucose is the major fuel for cellular respiration and key source of carbon skeleton for biosynthesis. So uh, yang ini kita tengok kan masa chapter cellular respiration uh, semester lepas. So uh, glucose is required for cellular respiration uh, as cellular respiration will be used uh, to synthesize uh, ATP. Okay, so ATP is, uh, is the uh, form of uh, energy that your your cells require to carry out uh, many uh, types of activities such as for example active transport okay or the transportation of uh, organelle from one uh, from one location to another location within the cell okay um, so all the activities within the within the body uh, most of it requires energy from ATP ATP which is generated during cellular respiration that requires glucose okay and uh, here it says uh, key source of carbon skeleton for biosynthesis. So from glucose, it can be used to synthesize another type of molecule. Okay, so for example, uh, for uh, for glucose, it can be used to synthesize uh, glycogen, okay, or, or other type of um, macromolecules, okay. So even other type of macromolecules. And then, uh, tapi dia punya pathway dia lebih kompleks lah. Okay, so daripada glucose nak convert to another type of um, uh, carbon skeleton, another molecule, uh, it has to undergo uh, a very complex uh, biochemical reaction, right? Okay, so uh, blood glucose concentration is regulated by negative uh, feedback. Okay, so negative feedback. So if your blood glucose is high, so your true uh, negative feedback, it, it will lower back your blood glucose uh, level to the normal range, which is around 70 to 110 uh, milligram per 100 ml of blood okay so around this range so you have to uh, you have to memorize lah again uh, so you have to memorize the the range of this blood glucose so if go beyond this uh, this range so uh, your body will secrete these two type of hormones depending on the situation so these are the hormones that will be um, secreted by the uh, by the pancreas okay so pancreas secreted uh, insulin if your blood glucose is high so the excess glucose will be uh, will be converted into glycogen for example and stored in the uh, in the liver so another uh, another hormone is uh, glucagon okay so glucagon is will be released for example in the situation where your blood glucose level is low okay so when your blood glucose level is low uh, glycogen will be released 
uh, and then causes uh, glycogen to be broken down uh, back to glucose. Okay, and, and then glucose will be released into your blood uh, so that uh, your body cells can take up the glucose to do the uh, normal cellular respiration to generate energy in the form of ATP. So, um, so pancreas is the organ that uh, secreted insulin and gluc uh, glucagon, but the target organ is the liver. So as you know, for every hormones, okay, there are organs, we call it as endocrine glands that uh, produces the, the hormones. Okay, in this case, the endocrine gland is the, uh, is the pancreas. And for every hormones, it, ha it will have it, uh, its uh, target organ okay, uh, for it to, to, to function, okay, to trigger that organ to, uh, to be functional. So in this case, uh, it's the liver. So liver is the target organ for the for the two hormone, uh, insulin and glucagon. And insulin and glucagon are hormones that are made up of uh, proteins. Okay, so later uh, in the chapter of hormone, uh, we are going to look at uh, that uh, hormones. It can be made up of protein or uh, steroids. Okay, steroids. So for insulin and glucagon, there are hormone that is made up of um, proteins, okay? So liver is the site for insulin and glucagon action. So uh, these two hormones are produced in the pancreas uh, and then in the pancreas you have clusters of cells, we call it as islets of Langerhans. Bukan islet eh? We do not pronounce it, pronounce it as islet, islets, okay? Islets of Langerhans. So within these uh, islets of uh, Langerhans, um, there are two types of cells, which is the beta and alpha cells. So you have the beta cells that produces insulin. You have the alpha cells, the dark blue uh, cells here that produces the glucagon. So this is the uh, islets of Langerhans. So this is the pancreas. Okay, so pancreas basically it, it is located. Um, If I'm not mistaken, it is above uh, above the stomach, okay, uh, above the above or below the stomach. It is around the stomach, okay, below the stomach. I think it is below the stomach, uh, just below the stomach, okay, just before uh, the stomach enters into the small intestine part, the the duodenum part, okay. Uh, so pancreas is located below the stomach, between the stomach and also the small intestine. Okay, so you have the pancreas. Pancreas, if you, if we were to dissect mouse, kalau awak, the, kita boleh face to face macam biasa, like last batch, ada satu lab ni yang mana uh, uh, kita akan buat uh, mouse dissection. So, but unfortunately due to COVID, so kita punya lab session is through just ODL. So, there's no mouse dissection. But if we were to dissect a mouse, so we are going to look at all these organs uh, and then you are going to observe that uh, below the stomach, you have the pancreas, which is a really fragile, um, fragile um, organs. Okay, uh, so it is really, really thin uh, 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 organ. But if if you were to move around the the stomach area too vigorously, it will be destroyed. Okay. So uh, so pancreas. Uh, it has two function. So the organ uh, pancreas, it will act as endocrine glands because it can produce hormones. It can produce and secrete hormones because it has the islets of Langerhans here, uh, the clusters of cells of uh, alpha and beta cells. And it can also act as exocrine, exocrine gland. Okay, so exocrine glands is done by this cell. Okay, so these cells, which is the duct, will function to produce enzyme that is involved uh, in uh, digestion of food. Okay, so enzymatic uh, enzymes that involve in uh, digestion of food will be released by this cell. Okay, uh, so so pancreas is uh, is a special organ where it can act as endocrine gland and also exocrine gland. Endocrine gland is to produce hormones. Exocrine gland is to produce enzyme. Okay, uh, digestive enzymes. Okay, so. Um, so these are the mechanism of the two hormones uh, for insulin and also glucagon. So gluca glucagon will be produced and secreted. So those are the two words, key words that you that you have to know where to use. Okay, <clears throat> alpha cell produces and secrete. Secrete tu maksudnya dia akan keluarkan hormon tu. Okay, so just jangan jangan cakap produce je, produce and secrete, produce 
belum tentu dia nak mengeluarkan lagi uh, produk uh, produk uh, glukagon ni daripada sel. So in order to to uh, to make sure that the glucagon can uh, can reach the liver so alpha cell has to secrete okay the glucagon same goes to beta cell produce and secrete uh, insulin okay so then only the the two hormone can travel through your blood uh, circulation and reaches uh, and reaches the target organ which is the insulin and also um, for 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 uh, for this organ, uh, for these two hormone, it can also trigger uh, body cells. Okay. So alpha cells are of pancreas. So when uh, when uh, blood glucose level falls, uh, you have low low blood glucose level, low amount of glucose, such as after you are uh, after or during fasting. Okay, atau tak makan nasi atau makan apa pun. So your blood glucose level will will fall. Okay. So alpha cells of pancreas uh, releases glucagon into the blood. So liver cells uh, is the target organ for the, for the hormone glucagon will uh, uh, will cause uh, the liver cell to break down glycogen into glucose which is the process is glycogenolysis. Okay, glycogenolysis. Tengok dia punya term dia. Daripada glycogen undergo lysis, pecah. Pecahkan lysis kan? Pecahkan molekul glu, uh, glycogen jadi glucose. Ingat balik chapter Semester lepas kita belajar makromolekul You have uh, look at uh, the structure of glycogen kan So glycogen dia punya monomer adalah glucose Okay, so the, the monomer for glycogen is glucose But the glycogen will have many branch Many branch that is that consists of glucose molecule So uh, through the process of glycogenolysis Which is triggered by the hormone glucagon Will cause glycogen to break down into glucose Glycogen ni dia bertindak sebagai dia adalah hormon. Awak kena faham dia adalah hormon. Bila dia bertindak sebagai hormon, dia hanya akan mengarahkan liver cell untuk break down glycogen. Dia bukan enzim. Yang akan break down kan glycogen jadi glukos adalah enzim dalam sel liver. Okay, glukagon hanyalah mengarahkan sel uh, liver cell untuk break down. Tapi the real rea reaction of breaking down glycogen is done by enzyme within the liver cell. So sebab tu saya mention tadi kalau uh, hormon glucagon dengan insulin dia adalah hormon yang ter, uh, yang diperbuat ataupun it is composed of proteins. Okay so bila kita tengok chapter hormon nanti bila hormon tu dia uh, adalah uh, hormon yang 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 dalam kelas protein dia punya um, apa uh, Arahan kepada sel tu berbeza dengan hormon yang di, dibuat daripada steroid So itu kita akan tengok lagi detail dah, uh, masa chapter hormon lah Okay uh, so you have to understand the difference between hormon and also enzyme So glucagon will cause liver cell to break down glycogen into glucose Okay so uh, and then increase the conversion of amino acids uh, or fat into glucose okay so this is another type of uh, reaction lah so apart from causing glycogen to break down into glucose to make sure that your uh, blood glucose level increase back to normal uh, another type of uh, reaction that it will cause is that it causes amino acids uh, or fat to convert into glucose maksudnya sorry ada tindak balas yang uh, yang menyebabkan uh, amino acid tu dan juga fat ditukarkan kepada glukos. So for example, macam contohnya uh, if there is not enough glycogen to be broken down into glucose, another result of uh, macromolecule that your body can use okay, to increase glucose level is uh, amino acids okay, from proteins from, from, from proteins and also fat that is stored in your uh, in your adipose tissue. Okay, uh, so those are uh, alternative uh, macromolecules that can be converted into glucose when your blood, uh, when your glucose level uh, is low, it's really low. Yeah. So ini dalam keadaan yang, ma yang mana uh, blood glucose level is really low, so the the punya alternative selain glycogen adalah amino acid dan juga fat that is stored in the fat that is stored in the adipose tissue. So as as a result blood glucose level increases and return to the normal set point which is around 70 to 110 uh, milligram of glucose per 100 ml of uh, of uh, of blood okay so 
uh, another situation uh, is when the insulin will take part it is when glucose level increases kan so lepas orang makan makan nasi ke makan roti ke makan kek ke whatever that uh, that has carbohydrate okay so um so beta beta cell of pancre uh, pancreas uh, releases uh, insulin into the blood okay so dia pergi kat mana dia pergi dia punya target organ lah kan target organ dan juga sel so insulin dia punya target organ dan sel dia adalah liver and also uh, body cells okay so body cells especially muscle cell because muscle cell will require uh, much more energy much more ATP so uh, it will um, undergo uh, apa, intensive cellular respiration so uh, so the, the hormone insulin will take up will cause liver cell and, and also muscle cells okay to take up glucose uh, to store to store it as glycogen kalau glycogen ni to store as glycogen it is applied to liver cell actually okay start as glycogen it is applied to liver cell and as for muscle cell it uh, it will cause the glycogen to be used for cellular respiration to generate energy basically okay so uh, kalau uh, insulin dia akan uh, uh, oppose lah kan dia akan uh, memberi tindak balas yang opposite dengan glycogenolysis so it inhibit okay in uh, inhibit breakdown of glycogen into glucose it will prevent glycogen to be broken down into glucose okay so because this will increase glucose level you don't want that okay and then uh, it also inhibit conversion of amino acid or fat into glucose so uh, insulin dia punya effect dia opposite dengan uh, glucagon dekat sini okay so as the result blood glucose level decreases and return to the normal set point okay so this is the mechanism. So this is the normal uh, blood glucose level which is around 70 to 110 milligram of glucose per 100 ml of blood. So uh, if okay, your blood glucose level uh, uh, rises such as after eating carbohydrate, okay, especially carbohydrate, rice, bread, cake, whatever, fries, okay. So it will trigger the beta cells in the uh, islets of Langerhans in the liver to secret. Nampak perkataan secret ni. It is preferable to for you to use this word. Ini adalah key point, key point, key point yang awak kena take note masa jawab exam. Okay. Pancreas secret insulin into the liver and dia punya target cells and organ dia adalah dua ni. Liver and also uh, body cells especially muscle cells. Okay. So for the liver it will cause the liver to store glucose as glycogen for body cells um, it will uh, it will cause the body cell to use the glucose for cellular respiration to generate energy and also burn off the excess glucose as heat awak perasan kan kalau awak lepas makan badan awak akan jadi a bit warm kan uh, so a bit warm oh, badan awak akan jadi panas ni sebabkan tindak balas ni lah so the excess glucose akan uh, digunakan untuk cellular respiration dan kita belajar kan cellular respiration masa tindak balas tu dia juga akan menghasilkan heat okay body heat alright apart from ATP and also body heat so um, so blood glucose level will uh, fall back to the normal uh, range lah which is 70 to 110 uh, milligram of glucose per 100 ml of blood in the second situation if your blood glucose level falls okay so uh, such as after fasting kan awak puasa, awak tak makan ataupun you are on the diet kan awak tak makan nasi uh, apa roti ke whatever you are not eating carbohydrate especially so uh, so it, it triggers the alpha cell to to secrete yeah? okay uh, produce and secrete glucagon into the blood so for 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 glucagon dia punya target organ dia adalah liver okay so it causes the liver to uh, increase the breakdown of glycogen into glucose it causes glycogenolysis to occur and also it uh, it also triggers uh, amino acids and also fat to be converted into uh, into glucose okay so this will cause uh, blood glucose level to rise uh, back to the normal range which is 70 to 110 milligram of glucose okay per 100 ml of blood okay blood so um for the second part uh, is uh, thermoregulation. So thermoregulation, nampak dia punya perkataan dia? Thermoregulation, how your body regulate body temperature. 
Okay, so homeostatic process for thermal regulation involve form, function and behavior. Okay, so it is a process uh, by which animals maintain body temperature within a normal range. So the importance of maintaining the right uh, temperature, the right body temperature is that if your body temperature is too high, uh, it causes a uh, reduction in the efficiency of uh, enzymatic reaction. Okay, but uh, and also if your body temperature is low, so it slows down metabolic activity. Okay, so so your body has to be maintained at the right temperature for for uh, mammals, uh, human, for example, the normal body temperature is around thirty seven degrees Celsius. So uh, for for an, uh, for animals, basically, it, we can divide animals into two. Okay, so they are either uh, ectotherm or endotherm. Okay, ectotherm and endotherm will regulate uh, body temperature differently. Okay. Kita adalah human, mammals. So, uh, human and mammals akan regulate. Uh, di, kita adalah endotherm. Okay, so kebanyak body temperature kita bergantung kepada metabolic rate. Okay, but as for the ectotherm, uh, its body temperature is, uh, will be influenced by by the environment. Okay, and also by behavior. By their behavior. Okay. So, uh, that leads to this lah. So ectothermy and uh, sorry endothermy and ectothermy. So make sure you uh, you know the term correctly. Ec uh, ectothermy and endothermy. Sebab kedua-dua istilah ni nanti awak akan confusekan dengan istilah lain yang kita akan belajar masa um, human reproduction. Okay ha. so ada ada lapisan kulit kita um, yang kita nama uh, yang yang kita panggil sebagai endothelium. Ha, so ini endothermy. Yang kita akan belajar nanti chapter yang seterusnya endothelium. Okay so so make sure you got the term right. Okay. Okay so uh, it says here heat for thermal regulation can come from either internal or External, uh, internal metabolism or external environment. So internal uh, meta uh, metabolism as, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, for example, uh, during cellular respiration, apart from the body cells uh, produces ATP, okay, uh, from the uh, metabolism of glucose, so it also produces uh, heat, okay. So this will maintain uh, the right temperature within the body, especially for endotherm endothermic animal, okay. So, uh, or uh, animal can also uh, regulate the body temperature uh, through, uh, which is influenced by external environment. So, this one is applied to the ectotherm, okay, ectotherm. So, ectotherm, their body temperature is influenced by the uh, environment, external environment. Kalau suhu panas, uh, suruh luar pa uh, panas, so dia akan me memberi warmth lah kepada katak contohnya kan. So uh, example, frogs is, a, is an example of uh, ectotherm. Okay so its body temperature is influenced by the external environment. So ectotherms tolerate uh, greater variation in internal temperature while uh, endotherms are active at greater range of external temperature. Kalau endotherm kan mammals, so mammals kita tahu dia, kita um, dia boleh survive uh, in uh, in wide range of temperature or, or kita as, paling senang saya ambil human lah. So kita lah like endotherm kita boleh duduk kat negara yang panas, negara yang sejuk. Bila kita duduk kat negara yang sejuk adakah badan dah darah kita akan jadi sejuk? Tak kan? So okay, we have we have uh, internal mechanism that will make sure your body temperature is maintained at the right uh, temperature. So we can tolerate greater range of external temperature. We can we can survive in any form of temperature that that as long as your body can tolerate lah kan. So kalau sejuk sangat sampai mi minus uh, apa minus uh, 20 like that and you you are not wearing any sweater or jacket so dia akan jadi bahaya lah kat situ. So adalah range dia okay. So as uh, ectotherm can tolerate uh, greater variation in internal uh, temperature. So maksudnya kalau kalau berlaku perubahan suhu kat luar yang mendadak ectotherm tu dia boleh lagi badan dia boleh tolerate dengan uh, dengan perubahan mendadak uh, pada luar suhu luar tu okey <coughs> creative variation okey so, sebab uh, badan dia boleh 
boleh apa boleh undergo some kind of uh, apa uh, mechanism lah to 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 control uh, its body temperature so for endothermic uh, animals uh, generate heat by metabolism okay so examples of endothermic animals are human and other mammals uh, birds a few non avian uh, reptiles some fishes and many insects non avian reptiles ni reptiles lah ah uh, okay ular um, so there are there are there are also reptiles that can be endotherm okay there are there are reptiles uh, at one point dia boleh jadi endotherm at one point dia boleh jadi ectotherm depends on the situation okay and then uh, animals maintain stable body temperatures uh, even in the in the large temperature fluctuation in the uh, environment okay so in a cool environment an endotherm generates enough heat to uh, to keep its, its body substantially warmer than its surrounding so when the temperature is hot uh, outside so endotherm have mechanism to cool up their body enabling them to withstand heat loss so kalau macam sejuk sangat uh, dekat luar so for example how to generate uh, enough heat your body will shiver okay so this shivering mechanism will generate heat okay to warm up your body or um, rising of uh, of fur okay so that will trap a uh, heat all right uh, so itu adalah me contoh mechanism so when the temperature is hot for example your body will sweat okay so the evaporation of sweat will cool down your body all right it will um, uh, cause uh, excess heat to be lost to the to the surrounding so that is uh, some example of how endothermic animals maintain uh, a stable body temperature at different uh, situation okay uh, so endoth endothermy is more energetically expensive than endothermy so endotherms need to consume more fruit uh, more food compared to ectotherm so kalau, contoh kita ambil uh, tikus ya, tikus yang sama size dengan katak so katak is ectotherm tikus adalah endotherm. So which one will require more food? Obviously the rat. Okay, so the rat will consume more food because uh, the food will be uh, needed to make sure uh, that uh, the body of this rat will be maintained um, at a stable condition through metabolism. Okay, uh, cellular respiration that, that can generate uh, energy to warm. Uh, to warm or make sure that the rat body is at the right temperature. Okay, so as for the as for the frog, okay, so its body temperature is influenced by the external temperature. Okay, kalau suhu panas kat luar, kalau dia rasa dia nak sejukkan, kalau ter, kalau luar tu terlalu panas, so dia akan cari kawasan yang lebih uh, teduh, kan? It will find a, a much cooler area, a shady area. Okay, so so that is what it, it is meant by energetically expensive. So, awak kena ambil contoh haiwan yang sama lebih kurang saiz mana yang akan require banyak, uh, lebih banyak uh, makanan yang endotherm lah Okay, berbanding dengan ectotherm Okay, so endotherm It says here, uh, uh, this bird which is we call it as red blue heron Okay, uh, ini patutnya small h eh So, betulkan awak punya nota small h Herodias, okay RDA Herodias spread its wing okay so the purpose of spreading the wing is so that it exposes a more surface area to the sun to warm its body temperature okay so this bird regulate the body temperature physiologically so uh, however they also have behavioral adaptation that main, uh, that helps maintain body temperature this one uh, i added uh, a bit more information so macam mana behavior dia yang ni lah okay so herons uh, are endotherms or warm blood, uh, warm blooded uh, animals but they can't uh, sweat or shiver that uh, the way that we can so kita sebagai uh, mammals kan kita ada sweat gland so bila kita nak kita ada mechanism kita yang tersendiri tapi kalau macam this bird okay so because they do not have sweat uh, sweat glands can they cannot sweat or shiver so instead they can flutter Okay, flutter the throat when uh, it is too hot. Okay, flat, uh, so not uh, not unlike dog, dog panting on a hot day. So kalau macam orang nampak anjing, bila dia panas, tengah panas kan, tepi jalan tu dia akan panting, dia akan jeli kan lidah dia, kan breathe heavily uh, so that uh, it exposes um, a large surface area so that it allows evaporation to occur. It removes uh, the excess uh, the excess heat 
through through that uh, way for for dog tapi kalau a uh, bird they can flutter okay flutter so this flutter the the, the throat lah to remove excess heat okay through evaporation so they can also use the extra warmth of the sun by exposing as much uh, of their body to the sun as uh, as they can so ini kalau dia nak warm the body lah okay so dia akan expose spread its wing okay so that uh, the spreading of wing uh, exposes its body surface to the to the sun okay so heron will uh, fluff up their feathers on a cold day to trap uh, to trap heat okay uh, trap heat okay or to trap their body heat so these are uh, these are example lah of macam mana ini yang kita namakan sebagai behavioral adaptation okay so this is how the heron behavior uh, to maintain the correct uh, temperature it's behavior adaptation behavioral adaptation okay so for the next type of uh, organism is ectotherm okay ectothermic so make sure you spell this term correctly bukan bukan ectoderm so itu yang kita akan tengok masa chapter uh, repro nanti okay so make sure you spell the term correctly ectothermic temperature kan dia berkaitan dengan temperature so ectothermic animals gain most of their uh, heat from external sources so animal do not generate enough heat for thermoregulation so usually uh, tolerate uh, larger okay, like, uh, fluctuations in the in their internal temperature so in, suhu badan dia dipengaruhi oleh suhu persekitaran okay the 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 external environment will give in, uh, will influence its body temperature so they can tell, tolerate the, the fluctuation of temperature so many uh, adjust body temperature by behavioral means so macam tadi lah macam heron tu kan uh, so certain organisms, certain ectotherms can uh, uh, can regulate body temperature through their behavior okay such as for example seeking out shade or basking in the sun so kalau suhu kat luar panas kan so dia akan cari tempat yang teduh lah kalau uh, kalau dia nak panaskan badan dia so dia akan berjemur kat tengah panas okay basking in the sun so ectotherms uh, generally consume much less food than endotherms uh, of equivalent size because their uh, heat source is largely environmental okay so so uh, so for this animal they do not uh, depend on uh food so much okay to to regulate the body temperature okay so kalau tengok ular lah kan ular bukannya setiap kali dia tak kena pergi makan okay so dia akan makan uh, pada masa yang dia dia perlu makan lah okay so for uh, from the description of ectotherms and endotherms all ectotherms are poikilotherms ectotherms are poikilotherms which is animals whose body temperature varies with its environment so remember this term lah okay so uh, poikilotherms are animals uh, that its body temperature uh, is influenced by the environment so for endotherms they are homeostherm okay homeotherms uh, which is animals has uh, that has a relatively constant body temperature okay so for example you have this lizard iguana sorry iguana 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 guana okay Re, uh, increases body temperature by sunning itself so ini kalau dia nak panaskan badan dia dia akan berjemurlah tengah panas okay so balancing heat loss and gain so for thermal regulation depends on animals uh, ability to control the heat uh, the exchange of heat with its environment exchange of heat so uh, either heat loss or heat gain okay so um so organism exchange heat by four physical processes which is conduction, convection, radiation and evaporation. So we are going to look at, uh, look one by one. So for conduction, so conduction is this one here, direct transfer of heat, okay, from one object to another. So conduction, direct transfer of heat between molecules uh, of object in contact with each other, direct contact, okay. So such as for example, a lizard that sits on a hot rock. Okay, so that is one example lah. Lagi satu example yang senang awak usik benda yang panas lah kan. So a, a hot stove for example. Okay, so that the heat from the stove will be transferred to your to your hand. Okay. Okay, so the next one is convection. So convection, transfer of heat by the movement of air 
okay, the movement of air uh, or um, or liquid passes a surface. So, kalau breeze dekat uh, dekat udara ni, we remove excess heat from the lizard's body. Okay. Uh, and then uh, another way, uh, another examples of convection uh, is when blood moves heat from the body core to the extremities. So maksudnya dalam 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 badan lizard tu is supposed to have um, uh, body heat. Okay. So when uh, if the lizard is uh, too hot, the excess uh, body heat will be um, will be carried by by the blood, and uh, the blood will um reach the blood vessels that 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 are near the body surface kan extremities macam dekat dekat kaki dia ke dekat ekor dia ke for example extremities eh extremities so the so the uh, the blood vessels will dilate and releases the excess heat okay through convection and then the next one is radiation kalau kalau contoh convection pada kita kita human kan convection apa dia Trans, uh, masa masa awak mandi lah kan so the the uh, the your apa the shower kan air yang yang jatuh dekat badan awak masa awak shower tu will remove body heat okay your body heat so sebab tu kalau awak keluar daripada bilik air lepas awak mandi toilet tu jadi panas kan so the the heat comes from your body okay uh, so because the heat uh, will will be removed daripada air yang mengalir kat badan awak tu Okay, <coughs> to con convection. So another one is uh, radiation. So emission of electromagnetic wave by all objects warmer than absolute zero. Yeah, absolute zero ni awak belajar fizik kan? So you you find what is the temperature for absolute zero, apa absolute zero to me, uh, uh, it means. Okay, which is um, if not if I'm not mistaken, um, tak ada objek yang bergerak pada suhu ni. Kan? Uh, so tak ada molecules, okay sorry, molecules yang yang bergerak pada pada suhu ni okay, they, they are static so find the temperature lah kalau awak rajin, awak belajar fizik so uh, for example, a lizard absorbs uh, heat okay from the sun, so the sun radiate heat so the heat radiated uh, by the sun will be absorbed by the by the lizard and also the lizard also uh, radiate small small amount of heat from its body to the surrounding air So and then uh, the last one is evaporation which is the removal of heat from the surface uh, of a liquid that is losing some of its molecule as as gas. So uh, example uh, evaporation of water from a lizard moist surface to the environment as cooling effects. Okay so kalau kita contoh um, contoh kita sweating lah kan so sweat will remove excess uh, heat okay through the evaporation of sweat from your skin. Okay. So the excess, uh, the essence, the essence of thermal regulation is maintaining rate of heat gain and uh, heat heat gain that equals he, uh, rate of heat loss. So heat gain must uh, must equal to heat uh, heat loss. Okay. So animals do this through mechanisms that either reduce uh, heat exchange overall that uh, or that favors favors heat uh, heat exchange. It depends on the situation lah can reduce heat exchange if uh, if your body wants to maintain a warm body temperature okay so you uh, favor heat exchange if your body requires excess heat to be released during hot temperature for example okay so six uh, general adaptations uh, helps animal thermoregulate so this one or can you ingat okay uh, six adaptation of animals so one is insulation second is circulatory adaptation Next is cooling by evaporative heat loss. Fourth, uh, behavioral responses. Next is adjusting metabolic heat production. And last one is physiological thermostat. Insulation uh, berkaitan dengan uh, layer of fats, okay, that that uh, that insulate body heat. Circulatory adaptation. This one uh, is related to um, blood circulation, blood vessels, okay. Plate, uh, cooling by evaporative heat loss, macam contohnya sweating, okay. Behavioral responses. Ada certain-certain behavior which is done by uh, by animals yang kita akan tengok example dia to ma to maintain body temperature. Adjusting heat, uh, metabolic heat production. Uh, yang ini pun kita akan tengok contoh-contoh uh, dia lah. Same as goes to physiological thermostat. So we are going to look at the first one which is insulation. So major thermoregulatory adaptation in mammals and birds. 
Okay, insulation. So we have a layer of fat that uh, insulate body temperature. So this re reduces heat uh, heat flow between the environment, uh, the animals and its environment. For example, okay, for example, uh, feathers. Okay, fur and feathers. Either uh, animals will have, will have fur lah, can. Uh, so feathers for bird. <coughs> So animals, uh, most land mammals and also uh, birds, okay, so this, uh, uh, so it involves rising of fur and feathers due to cold temperature. Feathers is for birds lah, okay? fur is for mammals. And then uh, human, we have a layer of fats, uh, so this acts as fat uh, for insulation, okay, uh, insulate heat uh, to, to, re to prevent heat from losing to the surrounding <coughs> to warm your body temperature. And then for this type of animals, whales and wal walruses, so these are animals that live in cold area. Okay, uh, so the Iceland, ke, the Antarctic, ke, Antarctic. Ke. So really cold uh, environment, uh, they live in really cold environment. So they will have uh, layers of fat, we call it as blubber. Kita human, kita ada blubber, eh? only, only for this animal. Okay. <clears throat> so with, blub uh, with blub uh, blubber, so body core temperature can be maintained at 36 to 38 degrees Celsius, okay? So next is circulatory adaptation. So this one is related to blood flow, okay, uh, in, your, uh, in your blood vessels, okay? So many endotherms and some ectotherm can alter the amount of uh, blood flow between the, uh, between, the, between the body core and the skin via vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Blood vessels can vasodilate to release heat, okay, and vasoconstrict to maintain heat, okay, to prevent uh, heat from losing to the surrounding. And then counter current exchange, it involves the arrangement of arteries and veins that runs uh, in opposite directions and they are next to one another. That is counter current exchange. Fluid, fluid that flows in the opposite direction. Blood in the artery will flow in the opposite direction as blood in the vein. So this involves uh, when the blood flows in the opposite direction, heat will be transferred from the artery to the vein, okay? Uh, the mechanism we are going to look at later. So first one first is the vasodilation and vasoconstriction. So in vasodilation, blood flow uh, in the skin increases, okay? Blood flow in the, in the screen, sorry, in the skin increases, facilitating heat loss by radiation, conduction and convection due to the widening of superficial blood vessels. So superficial blood vessels are blood vessels that are near your 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 skin, okay? Near the near, near near your skin, underneath your skin, okay? So there are superficial blood vessels that can vasodilate. So when the when the blood vessel sorry when the blood vessels vasodilate, it brings more blood that brings more body heat to the uh, to your body surface to release uh, to the to the surrounding, okay? And as for vasoconstriction, so blood flow to the skin decreases uh, because the blood vessels constrict, okay? Uh, so this uh, reduces the amount of blood that will be carried uh, to your body surface, okay, to your skin by the superficial blood vessels, okay? So this will maintain uh, or prevent heat loss, okay, to, uh, heat loss from your skin through the true vasoconstriction. So next is counter current exchange. Ini still bawa circulatory adaptation eh. Ini okay ni eh, circulatory adaptation dia berkaitan dengan aliran darah dalam blood vessels. Ya yeah, aliran darah dalam blood vessels. Darah akan carry body heat. Alright. So uh, next is counter current exchange. The term counter current exchange awak akan jumpa beberapa kali untuk semester ni. Satu dalam chapter homeostasis. Dua masa um, respiratory system, okay, respiratory system chapter yang last last, and then yang ketiga adalah a few times. Saya, saya ada tiga kali. Okay, so make sure you do uh, the explanation for each one. Okay. Ah, counter current exchange lagi satu masa urine formation nanti. Okay, yeah. so uh, so you have to know the explanation for each one. So counter current ni kita akan kerap kali tengok lah uh, istilah ni. So in many in many birds and mammals, reducing heat loss uh, from body relies on counter current exchange mechanism, which is the transfer of heat between fluids that are flowing in the opposite direction. 
So the arrangement of blood vessels allows counter current exchange to occur. So kalau awak tengok ni, counter current exchange ni adalah sejenis mechanism. Okay, dia melibatkan fluid that flows in the opposite direction. In this case, fluid dia melibatkan aliran darah dalam arteri dan juga dalam vein. Arteri and vein, they are adjusted to one another. Okay, so the blood uh, flow in the artery will flow in the opposite direction as in the vein. So the heat from the artery will be transferred to the blood in the vein. So this prevent access, uh, this uh, will prevent heat to be released to the body extremities. Okay. So, so basically in counter current uh, exchange, in a counter current heat exchanger, uh, I think it's lah ni pula, heat exchanger adalah susunan, okay, artery tu. Okay, artery dengan vein, exchanger. Dia melibatkan artery and vein, the the arrangement, okay, we call it as counter current heat exchanger. The the way that the artery and veins are positioned, okay. So, artery and veins are located adjacent to one another. So, because blood flows through the artery and veins is in the opposite directions. So, this arrangement allows a heat exchange to be remarkably efficient. So warm blood passes through the artery will transfer heat to the colder blood in the in the vein. So for example here as you can see, so this is Canada, uh, Canada goose and also dolphin. So as you know, they are um, organism or animals that live in, in cold area, okay, in, uh, in cold area. So they have to maintain a warm body temperature. So, uh, so they have to prevent their body temperature uh, so the body heat from losing to the surrounding. So especially when the blood flows at the extremities. So when blood flows at the extremities, it will cause body heat that transfers uh, through the blood flow, okay, to be lost. So in order to be, to prevent this, uh, the, when the artery that, uh, that flows, sorry, when the blood that flows in the artery that brings body, body warmth, body heat, okay, in order to prevent the body heat to be lost when it uh, when it reaches the feet for example okay the extremities of the uh, of the or uh, of the body parts of the of the animal so the 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 temperature the heat will be transferred okay from artery to vein so as as the blood flows okay uh, from arteries towards the blood capillaries that reaches the body extremities here okay so bila dah reach kat sini uh, haba daripada uh, darah tu Dah, dah tinggal sangat sikit, okay? Dah, dah tak ada dah, okay? Sebab apa? Sebab as the blood flows, heat is transferred from artery to to vein, okay? Heat is transferred continuously. That is what we call it as counter current. And remember, uh, the the temperature uh, of the blood uh, in the artery as it travels, uh, as it transfer heat to the to the blood in the vein is always higher uh, than the blood in the vein. Sebab apa dia tak? Out, out belajar kan, uh, fizik kan, the, the transfer of heat from object uh, that is uh, um, hotter than the other one. Okay, ha. so so they can make sure uh, walaupun transfer of heat berlaku, make darah darah yang dalam arteri sentiasa lebih tinggi daripada heat, uh, the temperature in the uh, in the blood in the vein. Okay, sama juga dengan dolphin ni. Okay, so uh, as the blood flows in the artery, it will be transferred to the blood vessels, the, the vein uh, that flows in the opposite direction. So this prevent, ex, uh, this prevent body heat from losing uh, at the extremities, especially for dolphin uh, at the fin lah, fin scan, fin dip. So that is body extremities. Okay, so the next one is cooling by evaporative loss. Okay. Sekarang ni sebenarnya dah nak letak habis masa. You all ada kelas lagi ke lepas ni? Ada madam. Ha. So kalau ada kita stop dulu sampai sini cooling by evaporative heat loss. So kita akan sambung hari Kamis. <coughs>